Hi everyone, in today's video we are going to talk about the most oversaturated luxury designer handbags in my handbag collection. I am looking over here in this corner because my bags are just sitting over here, but anyway, I wanted to talk about this because I feel like there's a certain pattern in the luxury designer handbag lover community, which is that when a bag becomes very, very popular, it also starts getting a lot of hate. And it kind of makes sense because the first word that comes to my mind when I think about the word luxury is exclusivity. So does the bag still feel exclusive when we always see someone with the same bag on the street? Does it still feel exclusive when there's always someone styling it on Instagram or unboxing it on TikTok or reviewing it here on YouTube? Does that bag still feel like luxury? Let's talk about it. I have five bags on the list. Most of them I have had for a while. So I'll give you my opinion on if they still feel like luxury designer handbags. So let's start. Okay, so the first bag on the list is the Prada Crystal Re-Edition 2000. And I want to talk about the Crystal version in particular because it's the one relevant to the story. So, many, many years ago, I went to the grocery store. I promise you, it's relevant to the story. I went to the grocery store and I saw a young woman. She was dressed very simple, something like a t-shirt and jeans very simple, nothing special, but she was wearing a crystal bag. It wasn't Prada because this bag had not been released yet, but it was just a crystal bag with a simple outfit. And I was like, yes, she's killing it. I want to be that girl. I want to go to the grocery store with a crystal bag because until then I had considered crystal bags as special occasion bags. I didn't see them as like a day-to-day -day bag, you know? But when I saw that woman, I was like, I need one. I need one right now. So that's when I started my hunt for the perfect crystal handbag that can be worn to the grocery store and that I can also wear as a dinner bag. And I had many, many failed attempts. But then eventually Prada released this beautiful, beautiful handbag. And you may remember that at first it was labeled as a Dubai exclusive. It sounds like a joke now, considering that this bag is absolutely everywhere and is relatively easy to acquire. But yeah, it was a Dubai exclusive and it was only available in Dubai and it was released, I believe it was the end of 2020, so it was the year of the disease you know what I'm talking about. So it's not like I was able to fly to Dubai last minute and buy a bag, you know, it was gone. But then after a few months, Prada announced or essays from Prada started talking to their clients and it became known that this bag is going to be released worldwide. I jumped through so many hoops to get this bag. And at the time it was actually worth it because I was using this bag all the time. And I was that girl at the grocery store with a crystal bag. So my dreams came true, right? But then something like a year went by and suddenly every girl was that girl from the grocery store. Every girl had a crystal bag on her shoulder. And it wasn't always a Prada bag, but I do feel like Prada did start the crystal bag trend. So I do blame them for it. And I'm also grateful to them for that because because of this bag, we got to see so many other beautiful crystal bags and I love everything sparkly. I love sparkly bags and shoes. So I'm very happy about it. But at the same time, it's also a little bit bitter because it was such a special bag for me. And then it just started feeling less and less and less special. And I think that one of the main reasons why it started feeling less and less special was because I didn't know if it's going to be a trend or not. Unlike, for example, when you buy a bag like a Chanel Classic Flap, you already know in the back of your mind that there will be 
hundreds and thousands of other people that have the exact same bag. With this bag, I bought it because I loved it. I didn't know if it's going to be a trend or not. I do still love this bag, but I honestly don't use it as often as I used to. I'm waiting for the trend to die again, and that's when I will bring her out again. Okay, and now let's move on to the bag that I just mentioned, the Chanel Classic Flap. This has lately been a very, very controversial bag, and that's mainly because of the price increases. Everyone's talking about it, everyone's discussing, is it still worth it, is it not? And I honestly don't see it as often as I thought I would. Maybe it's because of my location, but for me personally, it falls into the category of bags that you think everyone has, but it's mainly like influencers and celebrities that have this bag and I don't really see anyone with it. Of course, when I go out to a nice restaurant, there are people with this bag, but it's not like every single person has this bag, you know? That's how I thought it would be, but actually it's not. Sometimes I'm even the only one, you know? So it does still feel luxurious and overall I do love it. I love the small size, this is the small size, and I love how it fits on my frame. I love the durability of it. I love the gold hardware. I haven't had any complaints about the quality because I know that there are a lot of people that complain about the quality. I haven't had any issues until now. I hope that it will stay that way and I really truly enjoy it. Now, have I used it as often as I thought I would? No, not not really, but do I still love it? Yes, a hundred percent yes. So I don't know if I would ever buy another Chanel Classic Flap, but I sure am glad that I bought this one when I did because the prices have only gone up and even vintage Chanel bags, vintage Chanel Classic Flaps are so expensive right now. And those are bags that have been used by other people for 20 years and they cost four or five thousand euros which is absolutely crazy so yeah i recommend not to wait for another price increase and if this is your dream bag just go for it i still find it luxurious i still find it exclusive so i really enjoy it every time i use it are you ready for another controversial bag the Hermes Birkin. Mine is a Birkin 25 and often this bag is referred to as a grandma bag and by the way I hate it when people call any bag a grandma bag because whenever I see an older lady with a Birkin she always looks fire. So shout out to all the grandmas with their Birkins because they are killing it. Okay, I am getting off topic. Let's talk about the bag. So I feel like this is a bag that always looks good and it looks good with absolutely everything. You can wear it casually, you can wear it dressed up, especially in this size, it makes a great evening bag. It looks so, so beautiful and timeless and classic. So I love it. And I feel like this is also just like the Chanel Classic Flap. On social media, this is a bag that gives the illusion that everyone has a Birkin and people are even talking about cancelling Birkins and everything because they see it too often. But outside of social media, again, in my location and the locations that I have traveled to recently, I don't see this bag very often. And that's the thing with social media. It can leave you feeling like I'm the only person that doesn't have a Birkin. But in reality, Birkin is still extremely hard to get unless you want to go to the secondhand market in which it costs three times the price. So it's still a bag that is very hard to acquire. It is produced in very, very limited quantities and there are games and there's like there's a lot going on with the Hermes Cota bags it's not just the Birkin it's also the Kelly and lately I feel like it's all Hermes bags that are very hard to get so anyway once again I'm getting off topic I love this bag 
And since I don't see it very often around me, except for social media, I do consider this a luxury designer handbag, 100%. And I feel like it's been worth every penny and I can only dream that eventually I'll be able to acquire more Birkins because I love it. I absolutely love it. Okay, let's continue our strike of controversial bags with the one, the only, the Gucci Marmont. This is a bag that I had gone back and forth about so many times. I loved it when it first came out. I really, really wanted one. It was very high up on my wish list. I don't really remember why I didn't get it. But then I was happy that I didn't get it because this bag was absolutely everywhere. And not like social media everywhere, but literally everywhere. Everyone had this bag on the streets, at the restaurants, at the cinema, at the museum. When you travel, when you don't travel, everyone had this bag. And for a moment there, it did feel overwhelming. And overwhelming doesn't really feel luxurious, you know? But then everyone just kind of started really hating on it and really disliking it. And that's when I actually started liking it again. And honestly, I don't see it very often. Not even the like non-authentic ones. I don't see this bag in general at all, almost. So I feel like it does feel luxurious again. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but whenever I use it, it makes me happy. And I guess that's what matters. I love how durable it is. I love that it's lightweight. I love how spacious it is. And honestly, if you love flat bags, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't love this bag. So yeah, I am team Gucci Marmont <laughs> once again. And finally, the last bag on my list is the Bottega Veneta Jody. And this is yet another bag that hit social media like a storm. I swear, I don't think I could name a single influencer, YouTuber, TikToker that doesn't have some form of this bag. But even if we stick to this particular mini Intrecciato leather Jody, once again, it felt like everyone had one. And I feel like additionally to that, Another reason why it felt like everyone had one is because this is a bag that doesn't have any logos, which is why it was very easy to copy. If someone passed by you very quickly, you can't really tell, is it authentic? Is it not? And even if someone posts like a picture on Instagram and the bag is not like, you know, in the center of the photo, it's nearly impossible to tell if it's authentic or not. So that's definitely one of the main reasons why we saw it everywhere, because you didn't have to spend 1500 on it. You could just spend 50 euros on it. And so it became an affordable fashion accessory that contributed to us thinking that we are seeing the 1500 Jody everywhere. Now the hype has dialed down on it and it's not as popular as it used to be, but I love it. I still find it very luxurious and I do believe that it will stand the test of time because it's very classic Bottega Veneta. And I love how it makes a statement without having a single logo on it. Absolutely here for it. So. I hope that this year I will get another Jody, a bigger, more practical Jody, but I still love this one. I think that it's an absolutely beautiful bag. So that's it for my video today, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you found it useful. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I do love talking about fashion. So let's stay in touch and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Stay safe.